everybody. We are here at the Chocolate Bayou Nature Preserve. I'm Andrea Denham with the UP Land Conservancy. And since we are uh, not doing group birding hikes this spring, we thought we would do a, an intro to birding, a birding 101 with our local expert and friend, Tom Norin. Say hi, Tom. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so we are, we're here at the Chocolate Bayou and we're gonna be hiking around uh, talking about how to bird and what you should bring with you and all of that and also a little bit about why the Chocolate Bayou is so important for birds. So I uh, hope you enjoy this hike. We'll be taking our socially distant um, precautions as we're out hiking and we hope you do too while you're out here. Thank you. I am Tom Norrie. Appreciate the introduction. It's good to be with you all. I live here in Harvey just a few blocks from the from the beautiful preserve here that you're going to be uh, seeing today. And I look forward to this opportunity to introduce you to some of the wildlife and birds that are here and how you can best appreciate the experience. This is one of my favorite talks uh, discussing our connection with nature and all the health benefits and the well-being and the joy actually that comes from that natural connection. And so we're going to emphasize that a lot, getting into the zone of nature as well. Some practical tips are going to help you go out and have a good experience. We're going to go to different spots in the trail as we do this so you can see some of the magnificence, magnificence of this trail system. It's really set up for all levels of expertise with birding and wildlife viewing. The trails are nice and soft, they're open, they're unobstructed. There's beautiful signage along the way that shows you different species of both flora and fauna that you may see on your trip so you can really get jump started into the, uh, into the experience. But I'm gonna add some other tips as well. I'll make a point right now of saying that Andrea is gonna download a link of springtime warblers, which I did uh, a few years ago, which you can use as a manual to help you as well. You can have it right on your phone as you, uh, as you take your bird hike. We'll get into specifics in a moment, but to get into the philosophy just a little bit, I am, in addition to being a husband, father, and grandpa here in the Upper Peninsula, I'm a retired physician. And so I'm gonna make a couple points. You see, I do have my mask here, and Andrea and I are maintaining social distancing. Uh, we'll be doing that throughout this discussion. And make no mistake, this COVID virus stalks complacency and carelessness just like a lion follows an impala. You need to take it that seriously. And so we were looking for an opportunity that brings you a great experience in a safe situation. That's exactly what the Bayou uh, presents to you. Nonetheless, we have our mask because we may pass other birders on the way. And when we do, we want to have that mask on for sure to protect them just as they're trying to protect us. I was a chief medical officer over at the uh, UP Health System for years, and I was involved in the planning of the new hospital. And when we designed that hospital, we made sure that there was lots of glass for sunlight and view of the forested hills and Lake Superior and the blue sky because we know in medicine that healing and wellness and recovery are considerably enhanced by the experience in nature and the connectivity with it. And moreover, your own wellness, your own health, your own feeling of joy is enhanced by getting into nature. So that's what we're talking about today. So here we are on the Orange Trail, one of the three trails here at the bayou and you can already appreciate the fact there's a lot of diversity of habitat here and that's a real draw for birds and for wildlife they like edges they like opportunities to go high in the canopy and get low in the under, uh, understory and in fact as we'll discuss there are some birds that like to be real high and others like to be real low and that's all information you can use in trying to make your identification and, and find birds now a few preliminary points Fortunately, the bayou here being close to the lake is not bothered mu much by bugs. Uh, you may want to have repellent in the heart of summer, but honestly, I hike here a lot and it's usually not a problem. It's, so it's a very comfortable place to hike. You can see by the trail behind me that the trails are well established, they're soft, they're free of obstructions, so they're very safe as far as you're walking. The word I want you to think of as you're coming into a beautiful habitat, a stretch of habitat like this, is blend. You're not trying to make a fashion statement here. So when you come in to the woods, you want to be in something with it's fairly subdued as far as your attire. I'm wearing some browns and, and, and tan and some green to sort of match somewhat. So that you're not a startling object when you walk in. Birds are good at picking up 
something as small as a tick under a leaf. When you come in looking like a spectacle, the birds immediately go on alert. They're there, but you don't know it. So think about blending in. When you start your hike, be sure you've got a pair of binoculars. You want to have a bird guide perhaps with you or that uh, downloaded version of the PowerPoint I mentioned. And your instinct here is to go slowly and to strategize. This is not a power walk. You're not sitting here trying to burn calories uh, and make time on a mission. You are here to become one who blends in, becomes a comrade with the birds around you. And you will start seeing them. They will emerge. In fact, one of the most gratifying things that you'll experience is when you actually are subtle in your movements and you drift along and you play into the shadows of the canopy overhead or you set yourself so that the sunbeams help illuminate an area of low in a wetland below a ridge on which you're standing you will suddenly realize this is working i blend more easily than i thought this is not going to be a difficult thing on the contrary it's going to be quite natural for me so that's a key mindset the dress is appropriate have your binoculars have a cap on so the sun doesn't uh, doesn't get you uh, in your eyes and you're and then step in and start to go up slowly so you get into these shadows and you walk along slowly and if you hear something you stop the instinct sometimes to do one of these routines oh, there's something over here and raise binoculars and move around and get your wave to your comrades and you can bet that the wildlife and the birds are gonna go quiet you think the birds left they know what to do they get behind a leaf and they're gone for a while until they start to realize the forest has quieted down again and they can resume activity. When you stop and go quiet, when you hear something, you will find you are surrounded by life and you can start seeing it. And many times just in their random activity, they'll be walking right toward you. This time of the year is a great time to practice because we have, because we have all the migrating warblers coming through in their spectacular plumages. And they have a lot of song and the woods is filled with serenade so don't alarm them join them make them feel that you are safe within their midst and you'll have a good time um, warblers tend to be very active and then stop for a while look around reappraise the situation make sure that they're safe so take advantage of that if you see something flitting just freeze see where it stops and then slowly look at it. Bring your binoculars up slowly, whisper to your comrade, and you have a good chance of seeing that bird. Have that manual with you so that after you've seen it, you can look at it and identify it. When you start identifying some birds, scoring some birds on your little bird list for your hike, you're gonna get rejuvenated by it and enjoy it. Okay, we've changed location here. I wanna show you some of the features of this trail that again, is just set up perfectly for a bird hike, no matter what your level of expertise. The signage on the Bayou Trail system is absolutely superb. The birds that were chosen for these signs are those that are commonly seen here. So you get, again, a jump start right into the activity here. There's a description, a picture, shows where they, the sort of uh, habitat they like to enjoy. And here is a bird hut too, if you want to sit down and be quiet, just have a place to sit, maybe have a snack and watch the birds. It's like watching a theater as the sun filters down through the high canopy into this uh, low ground that's below us. You have a chance in a spot like this to see birds that like big trees, the high canopy, the mid-level brush, and right down into the understory. There are different birds that like each one of those. For example, one thing we have in the background right now is the, uh, is the northern yellowthroat, which is a small warbler. There's a sign for that here. But that little bird likes to be right down uh, with the buttercups and down in the low understory, down in the wetlands. On the contrary, there are black-throated blue warblers singing this morning, and they often like to travel up high in the canopy. So there's all these layers of activity, and if you enjoy this mindfulness, just gonna soak in the forest and listen to it all, you will be, become expert at seeing what's going on. And again, subtlety in your movement is always key. Now here's what we've done. We're up on the ridge I was telling you about. We're looking down, Andrew and I, down here in the bottoms, and we've heard a northern yellowthroat. We want a northern yellowthroat for our, for our bird list for the day, and he's talking it up a lot. 
There's a red start here too, you may be hearing in the background. So what we're gonna do is come down right to the level of the northern yellowthroat. They like to be right down by the water in, in the muck and the, in the marshland and the wetland. That's where he hangs out. So we came down the hill very slowly, kind of playing the shadows a little bit, using the sun to advantage, which is behind us, so that we can see well into the cover, and we're watching. We're spending as much time watching as we are moving. This is not, again, about quantity of steps on a bird hike. This is quality of steps and observing everything around you, becoming mindful of all that's going on. There's a lot going on. We're probably, we're probably hearing 20 different birds right now. So we're looking for this little yellow throat, and I know what he looks like because there's a sign right up there that said this is what, what uh, a yellow throat looks like with the key identification features. And we may be uh, zeroing in on him by listening to his witchety, witchety, witchety song, which is, <clears throat> which is characteristic. He just sang again in the background there. The boardwalk here is a beautiful feature here at the bayou. This was uh, put in after uh, UPLC procured this land. It gives you a chance to go right down in the cover and join the birds in some of their densest habitat. This would be almost impenetrable if it weren't for the boardwalk, but we're able to walk right down through uh, this beautiful stretch, and usually you see a lot in here. So plan on, plan on scoring some birds down here in the uh, wetland. That yellow throat is real close now. I want to see him. You see, I do have him flitting around back in there. So we've got our northern yellow throat. I think there's a red start around here too. There's been a female red start around here. My wife and I have seen over the weekend. I think she's gonna be nesting in this area uh, because she tends to scold us when we come through here. And uh, we'll have warblers here, by the way, not just during the migration, but all summer long. So um, if you're a warbler lover like I am, this is a place to come. Let's see what else we can find. Now I hear another warbler going on over here. We've got another yellow throat, but then high up in the pines, I can hear a black-throated green warbler. They have a characteristic song, a ZZ Zoo Z, that's very distinctive. They like to be up high, whereas that little yellow throat likes to be down low. And that helps you. When you're looking for a black-throated green warbler, you want to be concentrating on deciduous trees and higher up in the canopy with some evergreens interspersed, that's where you're most likely to see them, as opposed to a marsh bird uh, like the yellow throat. I have spotted a red start, a female red start. She's sitting up there in a limb maybe uh, 20 yards away. Sitting up high, she's setting up her territory like they're often doing this time of the year. And this is a situation, Avery and I heard the song and then we slowly moved along. And she's up there. Uh, she's up there belting out her tune. And one thing that's evident is we're not disturbing her. She'd be quiet if we were disturbing her. I know I'm talking a little bit loud right now, but I'm doing it kind of a monotonous tone. We're not moving. We're not making anything abrupt flashes. And so she's fine right now. And we're kind of one with her, and she's one with us. And that's what it's all about. That's blending. So just in case you didn't know, there's actually two ways to get to the Chocolate Bayou Nature Preserve. We started off at the Main Street um, parking lot in Harvey, but you can also get here from the Iron Ore Heritage Trail. So whether you're biking in on a long day coming in from Harvey, or if you want to take a nice long bike ride out here from Marquette, it's really only a couple of miles, and we've got bike racks out here at the preserve for you to leave your bikes and get out and hike. So now we're gonna be walking around um, in the area of the preserve that you can get to from the Iron Ore Heritage Trail. We're going after another quarry now. And again, I'm enjoying this hike so much. We've just had a rain, it's fresh out here. And despite that, there are no bugs. We're just enjoying this. We're not swatting at mosquitoes or black flies, which of course 
tends to make you more conspicuous to birds, but Andrea and I have heard a black-throated green warbler up here. Okay, we've already got the northern yellow-throat, we've got a good red start, but up here in these, uh, up here on the sea trail, or the yellow trail, uh, we hear a, a black-throated green, we're gonna try and get close to him, so come on along, let's do it. There's a bit of an opening right here. Again, we're taking advantage of a high ridge, looking down into a, into a wetland and low area. So it's like being in a theater, you're able to look down, get that perspective from high to low. And that black-throated green and some other warblers are right in there. We're gonna try and spot them. saw him flit again up in there. You won't be able to catch it with your camera, but he's there. And if you were using your binoculars, you'd be able to see him and see how beautiful the black throated green is and uh, have that on your hike list. What does a black throated green warbler look like? It is, uh, it, it is a lime green on top with a white belly and a distinct black throat. So it's unmistakable once you once you see it. Um, and that call is also distinctive and will lead you right to the bird. Now we have spectacular birds right now. The little red start male is uh, colored sort of like an, an oriole. It's got a black head but has a lot of uh, red, orange, and black on the rest of the body. Um, the black burning warbler, of which we have a sign, has a lot of brilliant orange on the head and a lot of black on top and uh, white below. Magnolia warbler, one of the, I call the yellow uh, streak warblers, has a lot of gold below and some streaking uh, and, uh, and a, uh, a grayer top. Beautiful warbler, um, like, looks like a gem uh, in the, in the uh, sunlight. The yellow warbler is in here as well, and the male is spectacular. It's all yellow with fine chestnut streaking on it. And it has a characteristic uh, uh, song too that's uh, transliterated as sweet, 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 I'm so sweet, uh, said very, very rapidly. But you'll get comfortable with these transliterations after you've read it and you've heard it and you've matched the song with a bird you've spotted. Pretty soon it becomes pretty nature to walk along and say, I hear a yellow warbler, I hear a black throated green. And you'll be surprised at how rapidly your expertise expands as you enhance your nature connectivity. We talked before how birds like uh, edges, and this is a prime example. We're on the end of a ridge here as you come right down uh, to the bayou itself. So you have an opportunity to see birds uh, from the forest behind, and you have, can have uh, waterfowl out in front of you. And then there are the birds that like to be on the edge of the water. And actually, I can hear in the background an eastern phoebe, which is a, a kind of flycatcher. They love to be along the edge. This is a good spot to rest on your hike, sit and just watch the water, see what comes by, rest your feet a little bit. And there's a couple signs here too, pied bill grebe and bufflehead, which are a couple species you may well see uh, when you're down here uh, enjoying the bayou. Here's another important point too. Now, Andrea and I are out on a fairly windy day, but there was a lot of stormy weather that came through yesterday, and often on the heels of inclement weather, the bird activity picks up, and that's why they're really active today. But they still like to go in areas in the lee of the wind. Beautiful feature about these undulating ridges. You can look down in low areas that are sheltered from the wind and the birds are often congregated there. Now, when to go? Morning activity is always good. When the birds first wake up and get active, that's super.
When they start singing their vespers at the end of the day, things are a little bit more subdued, but it's still possible. But on a day that's like this, partly cloudy, a little bit of breeze, a little bit of atmospheric activity, they're often very active too. And so keep those in mind. If you want to see a lot of birds uh, and the weather's reasonable, you can't beat the early morning. But it's hard to resist a beautiful walk on a day like this in the afternoon too. So you, keep, you can't lose, but I will say that morning activity is a prime time. So Tom, what do you consider morning? Like? Well, morning is actually daybreak <laughs> right on till about uh, say 8, 8.30. That's what I would call morning. If I was saying, let's go try to find the morning wake up, as close to daybreak as possible. Now that's pretty early, it really is. But on the other hand, if you're out there and you're determined to see as much as you can possibly see, it's something you need to take advantage of. We've just passed a family of birders, a fellow with his camera and his little daughter, his wife, and they've uh, been out looking for the spring warblers also. And uh, they've uh, scored the uh, black-throated green warbler and the northern uh, yellow throat and red starts as well so those seem to be the birds that are active today and thinking of uh, thinking of species that are active I'd like to mention uh, also that you might want to become familiar with the, the eBird uh, website now eBird is all small case e b i r d dot org and that is a Cornell sponsored uh, website uh, that records birds from really uh, all over the uh, country and all over the world. But it's so specific that you can click explore and, and then enter Marquette County when it's requested and you can zoom right in on sightings at, uh, at uh, settings like the, uh, choc the Chocolate Bayou to see what birds have been seen here by other birders. Uh, many other birders use that so they can uh, record their findings and also uh, find out what others are viewing. Uh, that gives you a bit of a heads up when you come here. Uh, you have a chance to look at your bird book or your, your manual, uh, review the song, review the appearance, and when you come on in here, uh, you may zero in on those species because you're uh, already familiar. So that, that's a great website. And actually, you can become a member uh, of eBird and uh, learn to submit your own sightings and, and add to the uh, database. So I highly recommend that to complement your other resources. Well, thank you all for joining us for our Birding 101 Social Distance uh, virtual hike. I hope you enjoyed it. Then big thanks to, to Tom Noren for joining me and guiding us along <laughs> on our, our hike. We hope you enjoyed it. And just as a reminder, you can get here from the Iron Ore Heritage Trail or from Main Street in Harvey. We do have a parking lot there um, and some bike racks for you to uh, put your bikes if you're taking a nice long exercise and, and biking out here. We hope that you come out and connect with nature and look at some birds. And like Tom mentioned, we do use eBird to uh, collect information on what's going on and, and what birds are coming to to the Chocolate Bayou to visit as they're migrating through. So you can be a part, an active part, of us helping to take care of this nature preserve by coming out here and birding and letting us know what you see. So thanks.